Hey everyone, I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Thanks as always for joining us on a very busy Monday. The lies that blind. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, Joe Biden is a congenital liar about little things and big things. Senator Joseph Biden, who held a news conference Wednesday to announce an end to his campaign for the presidency in 1988. Uh, I have to choose between running for president and doing my job. There will be other opportunities for me to campaign for president, but there will not be many other opportunities for me to influence President Reagan's choice. I do it with incredible reluctance, and it makes me angry. And I am uh, no less frustrated for the environment of president difficult to let the american people measure the whole joe biden and not just misstatements wait wait misstatements false they weren't misstatements in a presidential debate about a month earlier senator biden lifted phrases and even mannerisms from a speech by british labor uh, party leader neil kinnock now it was egregious and the lies of course kept coming Let's start telling the truth. Number one, you take all the truths out, you better have helicopters ready to take those 3,000 civilians inside the green zone where I've been seven times and shot at. No, he wasn't shot at. Well, then came the revision. Hmm. The lies never stopped, and I could spend the entire hour of the Ingram angle cataloging them. And when he became president, of course, he lied about stupid stuff that's easily checkable, like the price of gasoline. The most common price of gas in America is $3.39, down from over $5 when I took office. Okay, but gas was only $2.39 when Biden took office. And then totally because of his anti-oil and gas policies, it hit highs of more than $5, as we all recall. Now, he lies about the deficit, too, saying he reduced it by $1.7 trillion when his spend-a-palooza increased it. We all know that. Of course, the lies on the border, those are legendary. Gallup's new survey says that 70% of Americans say it's a crisis at the border or a major crisis, including 55% of Democrats. Biden's catch and release policies, they've resulted in approximately, get this, 7 million illegal crossings, according to one congressman. And according to the Customs and Border Protection, 144,000 encounters at the border in just the month of June. So human smuggling is now a billion dollar a year business. Well, the middle class in America may be pessimistic, but at least the cartels are happy. And lately, he's been lying a lot about Bidenomics. Our plan is working. And one of the things I'm proud of is that it's working everywhere, not just in the coast and big cities, like previous recoveries. This time, investment is working, and factories being built, jobs being created, happening in rural America, the heartland, all across America. Well, it's not working. It doesn't work for the average person, unless you define success as a scenario under which the Bidens get rich and the average working person gets poorer. Yet one of the most egregious lies is about to be exposed for the world to see. I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. There is zero, 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 zero evidence of any assertion being made. How involved were you in your son's Chinese shakedown text message? Were you sitting there? Mr. Were you involved? Uh, were you involved? No, I wasn't. I don't know. Were you? No. Get off my lawn. And, of course, the apple doesn't fall far from that tree. Not one investigative body, not one serious journalist has ever accused, has ever come to the conclusion that I did anything wrong or that my father did anything wrong. Did you and your father ever discuss Ukraine? No. As I said, the only time was after a news account. And it wasn't a discussion in any way. There's no but to this. No, we never did. Your dad said, I hope you know what you're doing. I hope you know you what said, you're doing. It, I do. And I said, I do. And that was literally the end of our discussion. And now it looks like friend and former business partner Devin Archer is set to testify finally after trying to avoid it before the House Oversight Committee. And he's going to spill the beans on then Vice President Biden's contacts with his son's foreign business interests. Now, according to reporting from the New York Post, Miranda Define, who she's going to join us shortly, 
Archer's going to testify that Hunter put his dad on the phone at least two dozen times with these individuals from various foreign entities. So how did this work in practice? Well, it was kind of like this. Well, late on Friday, December 4th, 2015, two Ukrainians joined Hunter and Archer at the Four Seasons in Dubai. A senior Burisma executive asked Hunter at that meeting, can you ring your dad? Well, Hunter did exactly that and put his dad on speakerphone, then introduced the Ukrainians that were there by name and said to everybody on the call, they need our support. Now, recall that both Hunter and Mr. Archer landed plum jobs on the board of Burisma, even though Hunter's energy experience seemed to be limited to how he felt as a person when he was doing lines of coke with random hookers. Also recall that Hunter's other business partner, Tony Bobolinsky, had also confirmed the big guy's conversations when Hunter was trying to impress clients. I've heard Joe Biden say that he's never discussed business with Hunter. That is false. I have firsthand knowledge about this because I directly dealt with the Biden family, including Joe Biden. On May 2nd, 2017, the night before Joe Biden was to appear at the Milken Conference, I was introduced to Joe Biden by Jim Biden and Hunter Biden. At, approx and a, at my approximately hour-long meeting with Joe that night, we discussed the Biden's history the Biden's family business plans with the Chinese, with which he was plainly familiar, at least at a high level. <laughs> that was during the 2020 campaign. Imagine if the press had actually cared. Now, the White House press, uh, press spokeswoman was asked about Archer's upcoming testimony. And now listen closely to what she said today. Listen closely to her response. The White House and the president still stand behind his comment that he's never been involved and has never even uh, spoken to his son about his business. So I've been, I've been asked this question a million times. The answer is not going to change. The answer remains the same. The president ha was never in business with his son. I just don't have anything else to add. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well, in business, well, technically, technically, that may be true. It's kind of like what the meaning of the word is is, right? But practically, that looks just like another lie. The astonishing thing here, though, for all of us who've known for years that the Bidens were on the take, right? No one could explain how the Bidens got so rich. No one. And of course, our press never pressed the question. Why? And we know the Democrat Party simply doesn't care if Joe Biden took millions in bribes. There is no set of evidence that will ever be strong enough, ever, to get them to say enough. But compare their reaction to Trump's phone call with Zelensky. We could not ignore what the president did. He gave us no choice. So it wasn't any change of mind. I always said, we will follow the facts where they take us. And when we see them, we will be ready. And we are ready. Well, of course, she was talking about impeachment. Now, once again, the angle expects the regime media to cover for the Bidens. Yeah, even after Archer testifies. But in the process, they're going to do enormous damage to their own credibility, even worse than they've already done. But I'm going to ask this question again. Why is it so important for them to save Joe Biden's career? Look, he's a crook and he's a terrible president. I know there are a lot of you out there who are cynical about Washington. I don't blame you one bit. But if this story is true, and it sure looks like it, that he's been sitting in on these calls to help his son's clients while he was vice president, that he was meeting with his business contacts, that is a massive scandal and a flashing neon sign that says America is for sale. Oh, and for all of you high and mighty politicians who've been lecturing us on dignity and respect and norms, many of you, of course, were trashing Donald Trump as he said all that. I'm talking about people like Mitt Romney, Liz Cheney, Murkowski, even McConnell. Well, where's all that emotion on this scandal? Hardly a peep. And I think we know why, because most of them would rather have Biden in the White House for four more years, even with all the damage he's done and all the damage he will do, than to see Trump back in. The Democrats don't care about any of this. The moderate Republicans, they haven't said much. So the only question left is, what do the voters think? Do they care? 
And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.